about you, but I feel like this year people have been making a lot of mooncakes, or at least I've been seeing a lot of recipes for them. And maybe I've just been living with my head under the sand for a few years, but I am desperate to jump onto this trend regardless. Today we're making snow skin mooncakes, which are different from the classic mooncakes that you might be thinking of, which are brown and glossy and sort of heavier. The ones that look like this, which I have conveniently right there. The ones we're making are more mochi-like in quality and are usually filled with custard or some other sweet filling. So this is most likely going to be amazing because how could it not be? If you haven't noticed yet, I love unusual food flavors and so that also will extend to these mooncakes because I'm actually going to make the custard inside corn flavored. Number one, corn desserts are amazing. If you've ever had the corn cookies from Milk Bar or you've had the sweet cornbread that people in the southern United States will flame you for, um, or you've had a corn dessert from one of the areas of the world outside of the United States that actually uses it in sweet desserts, then you will probably agree with me that this is a good idea. And to add to that, because mooncakes are made for the mid-autumn festival, which celebrates the harvest, I thought this would be a good matching because corn, what could be more harvest themed than corn? Just rows and rows of ears and stalks um, that usually have some sort of horror movie creature lurking in them, you know, just harvest things. I'm sure this meme will be obsolete in internet time by the time I make this video, but that corn song, that's a meme, is really funny. I think it's really funny, and I would like to have a reason to contribute to that meme using corn. To make the corn filling, I'm basing it off of Brazilian corn custard, which I looked at the recipe and I thought that looked really good. But I'm going to be adding some eggs to it to make it a little bit thicker and more sturdy to use as filling. So first for this recipe, I'm going to take three stalks of corn and I'm going to cut off the kernels and I'm going to cook them a little bit just to get some flavor out. Make sure you use a bowl because otherwise everything will be terrible. And then I'm going to blend up the corn and strain it, and don't worry, I'm going to use the corn pulp for something else, you'll see. And then I'm going to add the corn juice to 400 milliliters of almond milk, and then to that, 120 milliliters of sweetened condensed milk. Corn condensed milk is literally the best. While those liquids are heating up, I'm going to whisk together two tablespoons of cornstarch, 67 grams of sugar, three egg yolks, and one egg, and a third of a teaspoon of salt into a thick paste, just like this. Finally, once the milk is boiling properly, I'm gonna pour the milk into the egg mixture, making sure to whisk constantly so that the eggs don't scramble. And then I'm going to just pour it all back into the pan and keep stirring until it all gets cooked and thick. I still don't have the whisk. <clears throat> Once the custard looks thick like this, take it off the heat and whisk in 43 grams of unsalted butter. Finally, you're gonna wanna pour all the custard into a bowl and cover it in plastic wrap to first cool down to room temperature and then pop it in the fridge to chill and get super firm. Okay, 
now we're making the wrapper and chewy Asian foods have to be my favorite cuisine if that was a cuisine just like thick noodles or boba or in this case mochi like textures just that QQ texture I think it is the best top tier in terms of food textures and if you disagree with me yell at me in the comments so that we can have an argument and I can get some engagement to make this mochi like skin I'm using a recipe from Red House Spice and what they do is they use both glutinous rice flour and regular rice flour which they say will help to keep the structure better than if you were just using glutinous rice flour I am going to mix 44 grams of glutinous rice flour, 44 grams of regular rice flour, 32 grams of cornstarch, and 44 grams of powdered sugar together to start making the dough. Next, I'm going to add 240 milliliters of almond milk and whisk that all together until it is smooth. Finally, stir in 44 grams of sweetened condensed milk and 26 grams of a neutral cooking oil. Once that's done, I'm going to take the less traditional but more efficient way of cooking the dough by popping it in the microwave for four minutes set at high. It's mochi. So squishy. Once this dough is cool to touch, but not too cool because then I would have competition in the kitchen. You're gonna want to knead it until it's smooth and most recipes will tell you to do this with gloves, but I don't have gloves. So we are just going to oil our hands and hope for the best. At this stage, you could also color the dough, but I'm going for that natural look. Now I'm going to toast 32 grams of the glutinous rice flour to use to dust my mooncake mold, which I just got online. You can do that. Okay, now we are at the exciting part. It's the shaping time and oh boy, I am so excited for this. I have never done it before. Spoiler alert. But what you wanna do is you wanna take your filling and divide it into 16 pieces, roll those all into balls, then take your wrapper, also divide it into 16 pieces and roll those into balls too, and roll them in the toasted glutinous rice flour and then turn them into little pancakes. Then you wanna take the filling, put it into each of the pancakes and wrap it up, seal it up, and then put it into your mooncake mold with the open side facing down and stamp it. And then once you've stamped it and you lift it up, um, just push on the handle again to eject your beautiful little mooncake. Okay, it's actually been a few hours now, so we're gonna start again. Since it's been a few hours, I'm gonna say this filling do be a little solid. Come on. not sure that there is a meaningful difference between these and mochi but you know
for the camera. And voila, here are the beautiful snow skin moon cakes. And if you do a side-by-side -side comparison with the traditional moon cakes, which I got from Chukwon Bakery in Chicago, you can see that they do look a little bit lighter. They look like they are inviting you to eat like 10 of them in a sitting, which you shouldn't do for your health, but you could. As you can see, these moon cakes are so beautiful and really not difficult to make perfect for celebrating the arrival of autumn, which is my favorite season. You can freeze them or you can fridge them or you can just eat them right here. In any case, I hope you enjoy and I will see you again later. Bye. Okay, so I'm actually gonna use some of the leftovers to make my dinner because I would like that. So we're gonna take the corn, And we're gonna add the leftover egg whites to that. Perfect. And we're gonna add some of this toasted rice flour because I'm not gonna need all of it. Cool. Let's mix that up. And spoiler alert, at the end goal is to make a pancake. absolutely thrilled to see my face again in this way. After putting these in the freezer for a bit and then taking them out, the inside is really soft and custardy and frozen just like ice cream and the outside is starting to thaw a bit so it's just like soft perfect mochi. My favorite consistency.